Yo, what up my tubers? We're back for some more, uh, what is this called? Double feature here on the arena. Season just reset this morning. Uh, the rank season, that is to say. So we've fallen back into um, platinum. And uh, I'll try to get to number one mythic again this season, I think. Um, Kamigawa drops in still like a week and a half or two weeks away from now. So I'll definitely be grinding that a lot, but... Uh, Double features ranked. Let's just jump into our pack here. Remember, you get two rares, one from each of the uh, <clears throat> Crimson Vow slash Midnight Hunt sets, um, and then some number of uncommons, some number of commons. Fortunately for us, our raiders are bleh, unplayable here. Uh, I guess I'm going to just take this Thermo Alchemist, pick one, pack one, out of a very, very weak pack. GG go next. Okay, and that is much, much better. Wow. Um, yeah, Graveyard Trespasser is amazing. Lista Watcher, obviously very good. Rending Flame, fantastic removal. And we have like Sigarda's Imprisonment. Uh, I think the Trespasser is pretty darn good. The question is, do I want to take another on-color card here instead? Um, Thermal Alchemist into Rending Flame is a solid start. And if I if I take the Trespasser, we're sending some strange signals, I guess, but maybe that's not the biggest deal. Um, yeah, this is close, I think. I don't know. I, I, I like... Trespasser is just a very, very good card. I wouldn't call this a bomb. It's just very good. So I think I am going to take the Rending Flame here as it kills more things. But uh, I'm willing to believe that that might have not been necessarily the right pick. Um, but again, the uh, the Trespasser is, after all, at the end of the day, just a 3-3 a three, three or a 4-4. Four, four. That's kind of harder to kill. Let's follow up with another red card here. Uh, red card here, the Flame Blessed Bolt. Other good cards, we have like a Farmhand, Scab, a bunch of other playables, but uh, yeah, no, this is just an easy bolt here for me, I think. And okay, yeah, we'll just continue down the red path as we get a Spell Rune Painter here. Solid Uncommon, nothing amazing, uh, but definitely not going to take anything else over it in this pack, so seems good. Into a... Eh, okay, this pack's pretty darn weak. Um, hmm. so what are their viable options here? Shiska Decafile is fine. Not amazing. The Stormcarved Coast is okay. Bird Hunt or Bird Admirer is okay. I guess we will just take the Triska Decafile here. But uh, I don't consider this like some some huge signal or anything as it's just like a fine two drop in a pinch, but Still just very open to, to any other colors. And just like all of the previous formats, uh, sorry, all of the previous drafts of this format, uh, it's not bad to stay a little bit open because you're going to see so many different uh, rares throughout the draft. As we get, what, a Catapult Fodder, a Gale Drifter. Don't think the Epic here is good enough to take Stand alone. Uh, looks like the Catapult Fodder could actually be pretty good in our start. If I wanted to take that, could also stick on color with Triska Decafile and just take the Gale Drifter. I actually think the Gale Drifter is probably just a better choice here. I I don't think Catapult Fodder is necessarily what you want to do in this double feature format. And I've already passed quite a few black cards to the left, so getting to the uh, the tail end of pack number one here. Um, feels like we're probably not going to get past too many black cards. As a result, Death's Bonnet Sprout is good, Blood Fountain's good, Flame Breather's okay, Siege Zombie's good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy just to take a Flame Breather here. We're already going to um, plan on getting a pretty spell-heavy deck, right? We have the Alchemist and the Painter, so maybe there's a nice 2-drop. So we get an Alchemist Retrieval here, or the Brood Weaver. Hmm. Brood Weaver's pretty strong. 
but I think we have a game, game plan in mind now. So let's just take the bounce spell. I don't think this was the best card in the pack, but it goes the best with what I already have. Um, so even though there are a bunch of different rares in this format, you don't necessarily need to have the rares to win as we, wow, wheel a fantastic set of cards from our initial opening pack. Consider Amalgam, another Gale Drifter, Anger, even Stinger is fine. I'll just go with a secondary Drifter here over the Consider. Um, looks like a Mulligan there. Don't think we'll be playing a Band in the post. But as long as you have good interaction, good curve, continuing my thought, um, you'll do just fine. Obviously, it's going to be nice to have those. Bang. Nice. Nice pickups here. Obviously, it's going to be nice to have those uh, big bomby cards, um, but they're not a necessity. Okay, we might be moving into the blue-red spells then deck after all, huh? A lot of graveyard synergies in this format too, so... Um, these Gale Drifters are especially nice as we pick up an Unblinking Observer. I don't know if we're going to play that one. Opened a Winged Portent and a Rockfall Veil. Basically, this was the worst possible pack that we could open. I'm going to like first pick a Voldaren Epicure if I don't want to just take like Olivia's Midnight Ambush. That's really, really sad. Well, seven black cards in this pack. One red card. I guess because Epicure is so much weaker than the black cards, I'll just take the ambush here. Yikes, that's really unfortunate though. Pay Disturb Cost or Cast an Instant or Sorcery Spell. And if we end up in blue, that might be okay. How's this pack looking for us? Curse of Leeches. That card is decent. I don't think it's crazy good or anything. Um, Curse of Hospitality. I don't think this card is very good. I think Curse of Leeches is better than the Curse of Hospitality. Counter, an Angler. This card has been an overperformer for me. Sifters is okay. Kind of have a decision here. I guess we could uh, take the Curse of Leeches over the Angler if we wanted to. But... I don't expect to see too many black cards coming our coming our way, so I think this is maybe too much of a hedge when we have a perfectly good two drop. Yeah, let's just take the uh, angler. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to stick to just the blue red. Now, if I see another good black card pass to me, there will be a little bit of concern. Um, that might mean that black is just open from every direction. And if that's the case, we'll probably want to jump into it. Because it's just too much reward in the long term if we do. Okay. Um, Arcane Confusion's decent. I'm actually going to go ahead and just take the Alchemist Gambit here, though. I don't think this card is bad. I think it's often overlooked when you're specifically in red-blue, which I guess we are, huh? Don't get me wrong, it's not like some crazy bomb or anything, but with some like evasive creatures or some pingers or whatnot, you get a lot of value out of this style of deck. And we'll probably end up wheeling the Arcane Infusion anyways, so kind of like doing that. Another pretty weak pack here. Vampire's Vengeance is whatever. So we can take Immolation as like another kind of bad removal spell. I don't know, maybe the Vengeance is still better here. I mean, the only good cards in this pack really are the green ones, the Weaver and the Shadow Beast Sighting. I guess we'd rather just take Vengeance. Shield of the Grave's decent, Reckless Impulse is decent, and that's a pick five bleed dry. Okay, it's possible that black is, yeah, just open from both directions then. Kind of unfortunate. It's, it's Pretty late to make the swap now. If it if I had done so a couple picks earlier, I'd be more comfortable. Because I'm losing out on a playable card here if I decide to take the bleed dry and make it work. Oh, God. All right. 
wishy-washy, but I'll take it. Okay, some more playable blue and red cards. I mean, the Hobbling Zombie is also decent if we wanted to take another black card, but... I don't want to just take another flyer. Gale Drifter is good. Into a... Alright, Brimstone Vandal's okay. I like the Otherworldly Gaze here, too, when we have three Gale Drifters now. It's just a nice, decent setup spell. Actually, we have the uh, Angler and the three Gale Drifters, so this is a good setup, but... Probably just want the Vandal here instead. I really like this type of card in this deck, and wow, what a freaking pick eight. Another Painter and a Whispering Wizard. Okay. Well, I'm glad I stuck with uh, Blue-Red for now instead of... I mean, I took the bleed dry, but continuing to take black cards, because that's really freaking good. Portent's bad. Larger Zombie's not bad, though. I think people underrate that one. Some more playables here. How many spirits are we at for Snare? Oh, zero. Okay. Uh, well, we don't have a unreasonable amount of... Uh, Disturb cards, though. There's our Arcane Infusion on the wheel with seven instants and sorceries right now. We'll see if pack three gives us enough. Okay. I need to pick up some more removal. I only have that Rending Flame and the Flame Blessed Bolt right now. I don't think we're going to be we're going to be running this Vengeance. Might still be cutting the larger zombie. Some of these two drops are a little bit more filler. Like I don't want to be running the Observer. Reckless Impulse on the wheel is good. Okay. Come on, pack three. Give me some good rares. Sunstreak Phoenix. I don't even remember what this is. Four mana, four two flyer. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as it enters the battlefield. And whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you may pay two if you do return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay, yeah. So just a good value card. Uh, we are passing a visionary, a great two drop. Chill's okay. Cemetery's okay. Removal. Phoenix looks good here. We are a little bit loaded on 4-drops, though. This is going to be my 5th 4-drop. Not ideal, I suppose, but... I mean, I guess... I guess Larger Zombie probably going to end up making the deck. See, these are the packs where we're really needing to see removal here. I mean, I guess the Mysterious Tome is pretty good. I guess that's pseudo-removal. I don't think we want the Cemetery. Eh, Tome's an overperformer. Draw cards, tap creatures. Falconrath Forebear. <laughs> Another Rockfall Veil now. What do we have? Harvest Tide Infiltrator, Belligerent Guest, and a Dreadlight Monstrosity. Don't think we want Evolving Wilds. Yeesh. I mean, I don't think I want either of these three drops, do I? Might just be better to take a, a monstrosity here. So we have a bunch of disturbed creatures, so it's not going to be too hard to turn this online. Okay, another Triska deck file, don't think so. Astronomer is not that great. Egg we don't have any synergies with. Elementalist is good if you have a good spells deck, which I don't actually think we do. So I think I'm just going to take the Otherworldly here. Another Otherworldly. Yuck. Am I going to play two Otherworldly? Maybe better than Arcane Conf uh, Infusion in this deck? Probably. All right. Filler, filler, filler. Skywarp scab worth running, maybe. Okay, Overwhelmed Archivist is good, but man. So we're just missing the burn spells. Didn't see enough of those. As we get a Wandering Mind now, 8th pick. Okay. Well, I like that. Gonna cut that scab. Cemetery came back too. Okay, that's nice. Good to get some extra burn. Or, er, not burn, removal. I don't think this is a good Storm Skrelix deck. 
I have eight instants and sorceries. I don't think Hearse and Second Cemetery are worth it though, so maybe that's consideration. Guest is whatever. Need to cut a few cards here. Creature counts at 16. Hmm. I guess we don't need the monstrosity. Maybe we keep the curve low. I'm probably going to end up cutting the gambit too then. It's cute, but it's certainly not necessary. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of on-color cards, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're good. I think if I had ended up taking the, uh, the Trespasser over the Rending Flame, it would have ended up better. But at the time, I think the, the taking the Rending Flame over the Trespasser made sense. It's just unfortunate that we didn't see much red after that initial couple few picks there. Couple few picks, he says. Alright, where are we at? Guess I'm just going to cut the Triska deck of file, maybe? Creature counts then 14, so maybe they'll... No, let's cut the larger zombie and keep the Triska deck of file. Yeah, this deck's okay. If nothing else, we have a lot of flyers. Still don't think the Screelix is worth it. Although I guess the, the other worldlies are like double spells. They count two towards the Screelix, but... I mean, again, look at our... Look at our non-creature spells. Only the Rending Flame and the Impulse really get reduced, so yeah, never mind. I think it's just a slow flyer here for us. It's a little bit expensive at 5 mana. 4 mana, sure. Absolutely play it, but I think there's a big difference between a 5 mana 2-4 and a, uh, a 4 mana 2-4. Alright, I'd say this deck on average probably gets like 3 or 4 wins. I'm not expecting any more. Would not be surprised, though, if we get fewer than three or four. All right, so remember, this is the season reset day, which means there are going to be very, very few, if any, people in Mythic already. Uh, and anybody that's in Platinum, like we're playing right now, would have been a Mythic in the previous season, so. Turn two, Reclusive Taxidermist. I guess I'm going to play the 2-1, because it might be able to attack next turn, but the opponent has 4 mana next turn if they have a land drop. I'm already not thrilled with my position. Oh, they don't have a land, though. That's great for us. Let's go ahead and smash in for 2. Alright, if we can punish them before they can find another land... Shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Now we are in a rougher spot. All right, we can definitely keep Tome. Let's just play out our flyer. Next turn we can play like Wandering Mind. Um, or we can play the Tome and immediately draw a card. The opponent might try to get super aggro here, it looks like. Are they going to just equip the Ripsaw? Hit me for seven? That's not a bad play. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. I could also block. It I mean, it doesn't have trample yet. Actually, I lied. That's crazy not to block, right? Jump with the... Yeah, let's jump with the angler here. Because now that gives us a bunch of different plays that we can make this turn. We can just go double flyer here instead. Let's attack with four. We can race them. No problem. Let's play out the Wandering Mind, see what we hit, and then uh, disturb the Angler. 
Nice. Again, I think I'm okay chumping here instead of taking seven, because I don't want them to start giving it trample. Because they could race me pretty easily. I think I want to block while I can, and the one-two is not really changing the clock. Just a pass. Okay, I don't know what their game plan is here then. Let's go ahead and smash for five. See what they do. Gotta be some kind of removal spell, right? Yeah. Minus five, minus five. Okay. Uh, that's fine. They take two, they go to 11. I have six mana. We definitely want to get this online. I think I might actually like rending flame their taxidermist too, because they're missing land drops. Keep them low on mana. And now that we have the, the alchemist, any instant or sorcery is going to really chonk them. So now we're not going to chump anymore. Old stick fingers. Okay. Let's ping for one. Impulse, trigger, trigger. We play the Archivist and hit a land. We can play out the Shipwreck Sifters too. Oh, that's not a bad draw. I think we're going to discard the Tome now, as it's a little bit too slow. Back for two in the air. And then we can block and retrieve one of our own creatures. Although I guess we don't even want to do that. Let's just chump here. Our other creatures are more important. Ah, gain three is annoying. Okay, so... One, two, three, one, two, one, two. So let's start with the looter. Oh, not bad. We can discard another... Disturb card. Smack them in for two in the air. Play land. This is our last chance to play out the Brimstone Vandal, so we might as well play the free creature. Then we can just bounce their Lumber Knot now instead. So we can go block, block. Remember, the Rejuvenator is a 2-4 right now, so it's only potentially dealing 4 because of the Lumber Knot. So once I bounce the Lumber Knot here, the Rejuvenator is just a 2-4, being blocked by two 2-3s. Two okay. I mean, I probably got a little bit loosey-goosey making some of those blocks super early. Like blocking with the 1-2 the first time, the 1-2 flyer with the first time. Might not have been necessary, but felt like we were so far ahead I could afford to play a little bit safer there. And maybe that was wrong. Worked out, though. Yeah, it's surprising how much uh, pressure the blue-red deck can uh, can put forward. Like a couple pokes for two damage here or there. 
adds up pretty quickly when uh, you also got a few pingers in the, the mix. Okay. On the play here for our next game. Hand looks great. Uh, I'm not going to bother casting the otherworldly turn one. We're going to wait till after we get the alchemist online. Maximize our ping potential. Blue, black. Oh, please don't have Parasitic Grasp. It's a human, right? Yeah. Shipwreck Sifter. I'm okay with that. We're not going to upkeep the Otherworldly. It's not super likely we draw a Mountain, which would be our worst draw in the deck right now, so... Let's just wait and draw naturally. We have plenty of three drops we can find that we'd rather use our mana on. Island's okay. Wandering Mind's fantastic too. That's what I'm talking about. One of the three drops. And Gale Drifter, Shipwreck Sifter, three lands. We hit a bolt. Good stuff. OP discarded a looks like a devious cover. Oh, a mask of Grizzlebrand. That card is very strong, but very slow. Right, let's just pass. They can't afford to equip since we have the bolt in hand that they know about. Three to equip, yeah. But his castaway is good. Thing for one. Let's go ahead and otherworldly untap our alchemist. Put any of them into your graveyard. Let's put the Gale Drifter into the graveyard. And second island into the graveyard. And we'll go ahead and run out the Gale Drifter, or Whale Drifter. Sure, that's fine. Don't really care if they counter my random 2-2 flyer. I don't need to worry about tapping out here, because both their creatures are only one power, so them equipping the Mask Grizzlebrand is probably not what they want to be doing anyways. And if they do, I'm A-OK -okay with it. For the most part, a free roll block, but if they have a way to give minus two, minus two, that's sad. Hmm. That's a little bit annoying. Um... What do we want to keep here? This is actually kind of tough. Feels like the Alchemist has a lot more potential, but the Wandering Mind is more immediate damage. I mean, what's our sequence next turn? So I'm assuming I'm going to need to hold up Retrieval for their Gargantua when they go for Mask Equip. Which means I'm only going to use 3 mana. I feel like I want to keep the Alchemist though. Alright, so let's play the Triska deck file, land, pass. 
We have three cards in our graveyard currently. We want to get up to five for the cemetery. All right, they do go for the equip. It's a good tempo turn. That's fine. It's pink for one. Otherworldly. Um. Draw the Kessig. So I think we're going to sack that to their Gargantua when they play it again. And then we do want to attack for one here. They know I have the bolt in my hand, so they can't even reasonably block. Let's go ahead and draw. And then play the Flame Breather, which we will probably sack. Alright, good stuff. Rending Flame was a great answer to the uh, Gargantua. So I go to 18, they go back up to 10. Oh, they're gonna go with the Lantern Bearer instead, sure. So they're gonna sack that to the uh, Gargantua since they know I have. Um, since they know I have, a uh, Blessed Bolt. This is not a spirit yet, right? now. it's a human. Oh, uh, this is another tough decision. Flame Breather plus Alchemist is a lot of... ...quick damage. But Triska Decafile gives me long-term game plans. But I guess we're not doing long-term anymore, so... Alright. Discard it. Or rather, sacrifice it. Let's lock there. Gargantu in the cemetery. Ping him for one. Back for one. Pass. I'm gonna regret not keeping my Triska Decafile. So much card advantage. I probably should have just sacrificed the Flame Breather. We'll see. <laughs> they are close to dead though, so... I mean, that's why I went with this play. Each of these spells in my hand is representing two damage. Yep. We'll take one. Maybe they have like a grizzly ritual here, kind of suck. That 
Yeah, they have some big decision, apparently. Oh, grafted identity to steal. Oh, that card is so good. Well, I don't think I'm casting either of these in response. All right. So be it. Oof. I mean, I guess if I had kept the Triska Decafile, they would have stolen that instead, so... I'm hoping they go for Lantern Bearer. Went for an Eaten Alive, yikes. Alright, let their triggers resolve. So they can pay two life and draw two cards if they want to. And now we're in a pretty bad spot. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Couple lands in a row, and that's all it took. Now they get to make a 3-4 flyer from their graveyard. Yeah. Mm. Good beats. Because once that mask of Grizzlebrand starts gaining them 3 life, it's going to be pretty hard to win. Even just if it connects once, we're probably GG'd. And they're not equipping either, so that's not a good sign. They might have another counter in their hand. Yep. Alright, that probably does her. I don't think I have a huge comeback card in my deck, do I? Uh, certainly not the land number 10. Alright, good beats. I can kill their 2-1, but again, I don't really have a good way to come back from that after uh, losing my Triska deck of file and not being able to draw a bunch of cards. But... I don't think we were beating that much removal in a row anyways. It was that one turn that mattered. Or rather, it was that one turn that had an interesting decision. I mean, I'm sure there was a maybe a better play earlier, but yeah. Sacking the Triska Decafile instead of sacking the Kessig Flame Breather would have drawn me one more card. But it didn't seem like that mattered in the end. Alright, uh, good game. On the draw here with a, well, now a much better looking hand with that Alchemist off the top. Whoa, they are getting aggro. Just immediately turn two. Hitting me for three. Hungry for more. I like Hellspark Elemental. Exactly like our Hellspark Elemental, really. I'm not going to mind if they just hit me for three again. Yep, alright. So five mana, deal six, gain six. At least that's what it turned into effectively. Let's take another worldly, I guess, because we don't have another option. I 
my wandering mind has fallen. That is a Stromkirk Blood Thief. Sure. Let's get our flyer online. Between the retrieval and the rending flame, we don't need to worry about the Blood Thief just yet. Looks like a good rending flame target to me. It's a good draw too. Alright, let's ping. Get some value here. Nice. Ping. Land. And we want a rending flame, the celebrants this turn. We can play the Phoenix next turn, there's no rush. And they're down below 20. That's not a good sign. Eh, okay. They probably have like a stolen vitality or something. I don't mind taking two and letting them get a... Uh, a token. Well, not a token, a counter, but I, as well as a token. Maybe they, maybe they tricked me. I don't know. I figure since we have the retrieval in our hand, I didn't need to make the block. Uh, I'm actually going to sit back this turn now, because we have a lot of grind out value. No need to rush. I'm pretty happy with making both of these trades. Okay. Maybe they have a way to eat cards from my graveyard. If they have that, like the Diagraph Horde. No, that's not it. Oh. They're just going to eat the bat right now. That's fine. Sure. Even if I bounce their uh, Awakener... In response, they still draw a card, so it doesn't really matter to do that. Don't need those. We will draw the lock. So let's go with Locked in the Cemetery on the Demon, play out our Spell Rune Painter, and then uh, activate our Otherworldly Gaze. Flashback, end of their turn. Next turn cycle, I'll probably bring bring back my Phoenix from the Graveyard instead of playing the Gale Drifter, though. That's fine. That's fine. I don't think the flame breather is going to be all that good anymore. I think we'll keep the tome and the vandal and draw the tome this turn. Now the question is, do I want to pass, or do I want to bring back my Phoenix, finally? I don't know, getting out this Tapper makes a lot of sense to me. And then we can just pass here. Wait for them to sack a token. And then we'll go ahead and go for the bounce. Nice bit of tempo here, especially when we're drawing extra cards with the tome. And then after I activate the tome this turn, I'm going to start uh, 
That's fine. Start uh, tapping creatures next turn. So they might just replay the socialite here. Let's draw. And let's just pass. Go to nighttime, get our Phoenix. Tap down their socialite, flip our howler. This actually is grinding out a lot better than uh, I thought. I didn't expect this deck to really grind, 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 but here we are. Right, they're going to flip it back for me, sure. Let's go ahead and smash in the air, and we have... Yep, I think this is right. I was debating on using the tome there instead, but... I think getting out two creatures makes a lot more sense. In fact, I could even just double block this socialite if I want to. With the Vandal and the Gale Drifter, I don't think that's a bad play. In fact, I kind of like doing that because of how much grind out we have here, and they're living off the top of their deck anyways. Sure. Yeah, no, this is great. Oh, the Awakener was a good draw for them. Slightly annoying, I guess. Let's see what we find off the tome. Smash in for four. Oops. Play out our wizard. And say go. All right. This is desperation, but let's go ahead and make a token. I don't need to go for the kill next turn. Definitely just chumping here seems fine. And I think I'm okay taking uh, three damage. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to kill the Celebrant because that gives him a blood token for loot. We didn't want to kill the Doom Descender because that gives him a 2 2 blocker. Ooh. I thought these games were going to go a lot faster, but these games have been super grindy with this deck. Oh, man. Uh, so yeah, foreseeable future, probably going to play mostly double feature uh, drafts until Kamigawa hits. And that's okay, like I said, I'm coming. I'm kind of coming around to the, the double feature uh, gameplay. Deadly Pants. We are on the play, and oh my gosh, I would kill for a mountain here. Go down to six. Uh, do we have any double blue cards? I don't think so. I know we have the Phoenix. We just saw it in our previous opening hand. And I guess that doesn't matter now. We have two of each color. All right, nice little curve out here. Two, three, four. We don't have any interaction, though. But I suppose 
This isn't the worst case scenario if the opponent doesn't have anything to do very early themselves. Brian Comer, all right. Fine. Yep, I like smashing with both. The angler turns into a 1-2 flyer later on, so... Don't mind trading. Flyers that get more flyers. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Pass is a little bit suspicious. But what am I going to do? I can't really play around all that much here, so let's just smash with both again. Sure. I guess they're going to double block my Vandal. Man. Would have been nice to have drawn anything here. Oh, we would have blown him out so hard with just... So many different cards. Double Brian Comer! Okay, that's actually problematic. <laughs> okay. And we probably just lost. That's pretty incredible. I have to attack. They can't trade for uh, both Gale Drifters with just their spirit tokens and we need to punch through them eventually anyways. But this is... This is brutal. Looked like a good mulligan until it didn't. Fine. Alright, just tap out. Come on, deck. It's a start. I assume they're going to trade with their Amalgam now. Oh, they just took it. Alright, I'm okay with that. The Kindly Ancestors are going to be a little bit annoying, but... Not much I can do about that. And you want to block their non-lifelink creature, because if they do have a pump effect and want to kill my alchemist, then they'd have to pump the uh, non-lifelinker so they don't gain as much life in that scenario. Panicked bystander. Alright, just a hand dump of creatures, and oh boy, lucky me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to trade with their kindly ancestor, so we're not leaving back this Gale Drifter. I'm at five spells and eight land. <laughs> Not ideal. Pick six, they gain two. Ugh. What's my best draw? I guess cantrip, so consider. Consider it into something is what we want. Oh, that's no good for us. They get to sack one of their uh, enchantment creatures here. Oh, they insta scried top too. That's not good. a decent draw. Alright, that's a start. Sure. 
So that's what they found off the top. I guess we take the double spell. Um, This feels like it's all a little bit too late, though. I think they're at a little bit... Wow, how did they not equip their uh, Kindly Ancestor this turn? Yeah, I think they're just a little bit too far ahead now. So trade, block, take three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, they're coming in. They're gonna go up to they're gonna go up to nine. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, go to one. Or I could put the Wandering Mind on this. I guess they have three flyers. So I can't get through all of them anyways. So we might as well trade here. And they still get to gain a bunch of life back. Yeah, this is... Not great. Not great. Oops, got a tap in response. Put that in the graveyard, put those on top. God, we actually have so much potential burn damage here, but... A little bit too late. They gained too much life. Tap, bounce. Yeah, it's not quite enough. I guess I should have used Otherworldly Gaze before the Reckless. No, because we knew we wanted to hit the, the Alchemists. So bounce. Block, block. I mean, I'm at four. Yeah. GG's. Bounce, block, block, tap. Bounce, block, block, tap. Bounce, block, block, tap. Still take lethal. Very close, but not quite. Alright, good beats. Hmm. I don't know what the play there was. I don't know maybe if we didn't have a better play. Yeah. Felt like that was just kind of unfortunate. I didn't see how many spells they drew in comparison to me, but... At that one point where we had like six spells and nine land or whatever. Even though that's technically nice. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, what did they get all their value from? Brinecomer? No, it wasn't the one ones from Brinecomer that did me in. Hmm. Actually, it was, the, it was the Kindly Ancestor. The Kindly Ancestor gained them just enough life. Yeah. Because the Ancestor hit in at least three times, and... They lived with, uh... However much life. We would have been able to burn them out pretty easy. Alright, good looking hand here on the play. Priority purposes, I'm not even going to play the island turn one, because we don't... You don't want to just fire this off willy-nilly turn one. Too many people do that. We don't even know what we want right now. Because lands are still technically okay. I mean, drawing mountains isn't great, but we have ways to utilize the trigger from the, uh, the card anyway, so... 
Okay, we have a nice curve out here. Well, the opponent's not doing anything. If they just pass, it's going to go to nighttime. They're going to take a ping from the Vandal. Sure. I don't even see a need to run out my Triskaidekafile file into like a siphon. If they're not going to do anything, I'm happy just to sit back, pass, and ping them. That's fine. Discarded an island, drew two fresh cards. Organ Hoarder. Yeah, that's a good one. Bind. Bind a Stensia Uprising and a Spectral Adversary. That's terrifying. Alright, let's go digging and pinging. Not great. Wow, not great at all. Okay. There was like slight consideration to Rending Flame, their Organ Hoarder there, just to flip it today and ping them for one more with the uh, Brimstone Vandal. Hostile? Hostile, huh? I wonder if they're running the uh, Steal a Creature card. Yeah, that's freaking hilarious. Okay, you got me, I guess. Sure. No reason to take any damage here. They're just going to sack it to the hostile hostile anyways. Yeah. All right. Well, Triska Decafile hopefully can find me some action. Hopefully I don't lose this game. But... They have way too many cards in their hand, and I do not have enough pressure right now. Okay. Interesting. Let's go to combat first. I'm going to actually lead on the Gale Drifter to see if they have a counter for a creature. Just a counter in general. All right, and let's just get the uh, Alchemist online again, because the Tome effectively has haste, right? I can play it and draw a card the same turn. They play a land before doing that? Ooh, they have a reservoir too. That's awesome. Card's fantastic. Love it. But the opponent here is getting pretty darn low. Even one ping from Chiskadecophile adds up with my alchemist. They shouldn't have played their land first if they're going to use the Reservoir to look at a card. But they did not get punished again, and they can go grab their Pax Betrayal again. So nice. They can't do it this turn, but... They have a Burn spell they can grab? No, they're just dead on board. Oh, they auto-tapped all of their blue. Oh wait, they have an Unblinking. Wait, no, they don't have enough. They needed to leave up blue and get back their Geist Wave. They just left themselves dead on board now. Oopsies. Yeah. They certainly have more rares <laughs> than I do. 
I mean, I have two on the board, I guess, but... It's pretty good. I think I'm gonna... Okay, never mind. I gave up. I was gonna say, I think I'm gonna start off by bolting the Observer take away blue on an instant that they could have there. Okay, uh, what are we now? Three and two? One more win? I'll be happy. It's weird. A lot of the decks that I've had in this format I don't think are good and then end up getting like seven wins. And then the decks that... Well, I guess this one's not very good and it's only at three and three, so... <laughs> Shouldn't say anything quite yet. No jinx, no jinx. No jinx, no jinx. Hmm. We are on the play. Hand is okay. Turn two Angler, turn three Triskaidekaphile, and then if we don't draw anything relevant, we can just turn four, draw a card with the Triskaidekaphile. Not the best line, but... Yep, yeah, take it. Two drop. Ooh, the Liberator. That's a good one. I think we're just going to pass here. Leave back blockers. Do I want to trade? Nah, you can take your one damage or your three damage. Remember one more card to leave your graveyard, put a one counter when it dies. Okay, that's whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and consider end of turn here, I think. Good. That's a good draw. Fantastic. Nice. Alright. These were some good hits. What's your game plan here, friendo? Nope. I will bolt you in response. That still taps my creature. But their creature kind of gets wrecked. I'm happy to trade the Geist here. And if they want to pump, I don't mind taking five. Sure. Fine by me. This isn't blocking, so it might as well attack. Then we can just play the one two out. Plus hold up rending flame. They know about this though. But I think I'm okay with that. And if they want to pump, I'll go ahead and kill it. That's fine. Kind of want to just get cards in my yard so that Locked in the Cemetery is online. And we have stuff to do with our mana, right? Every four mana is Triskaidekaphile activation currently. That's a good draw, actually. 
Cast that now. Put those in the graveyard. Gives us the necessary five, so now we can tap down and smash. That is a large creature. Hmm. That is a problem. Um, well, crap. That's very bad for me. I guess what I can do here is kind of bait them. I can attack for three in the air. And then I'm going to main phase the otherworldly so it doesn't go to nighttime. Oh, Whispering Wizard, huh? Yeah, I'm going to keep the wizard. And then I'm going to pass. And presumably they're going to go for um, Winterthorn Blessing. And I get to bounce their Burly Breaker. Oh, they didn't go for the Blessing. Okay. Alright, well in this case I think I'm actually okay to just take six. Now we really want to draw a land underneath the Whispering Wizard, because we can just activate the Triskaidekka file now instead. That's annoying, they get to draw a card. Yeah, 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 but this is good. Draw a card. If there's a land underneath this wizard, we get to go wizard and hold up retrieval. Damn it. Well, I guess I might be chumping the Burly Breaker then. But, with the uh, Whispering Wizard, we can hopefully make plenty of tappers, or blockers rather. So that's going to happen regardless. Let's go. Bounce the 3-5, make a token. The block here, chump here. They don't get to kill both my flyers. can play out their wolf, but the wolf is no longer lethal by itself. Just need to draw some non-creature spells. Perfect. Okay. We are holding on for dear life. Oh, that's not what I want to see. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Guess one good draw deserves another, huh? So next turn we can activate Triskaidekka file and oh, yikes! That's really bad. Guess they tap my. T well, we have plenty of blockers, so it's not. The worst case scenario, but it's not great. I think I just chump here and go to one. Yep, Triskaidekka file untaps. Beautiful draw. Fantastic draw. Holy crap. And this triggers once a turn, right? So we actually do want a main phase. One, even though that lets them know I have it. 
I don't think we want any of those. Then we can play the Vandal. I do actually get to attack in here with a little bit. I'm debating if I want to attack with the Whispering Wizard too, but I think it's just the Gale Drifter. Oh, boo! They drew a way to give Trample? No! <laughs> Alright, good game. That sucked. Ay, ay, ay. Damn. We went three and three. Devastating. Alright, good beats. I think this deck was better than 3-3 three and three after playing out the games. I think at the beginning I said it wasn't much better than a 3-win or 4-win deck. But after playing with it, I don't think we got our justice. I think that was better than a 3- or 4-win deck. Some of our games we just drew kind of miserably. That one I wouldn't say we drew miserably, but... Uh, I don't know. There was that one turn where I didn't... I didn't bounce and instead activated Triska Decafile, but I think that was the right play. Good beats. I think the real lesson was actually during the drafting portion. I stand behind taking the Rending Flame over that uh, Graveyard Trespasser after first picking the Alchemist out of a dead pack. But then I think maybe swapping over to black would have ended up with a better deck overall. But good stuff. 3-3 three, three here in this, uh, what is this, double feature. So can't always be winners, but I'm glad y'all got to watch it. Some fun games there and a fun strategy for sure. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you back next time. Peace out.